Hello everyone, and welcome to Pacman's Top 10 Games in the Quantum Episode 2. I'm Pacman, and I've got some really good games for you this time. Most of them are actually 3D, honestly, because, well, last time they were mostly sprites, but, yeah. Anyway, let's begin, shall we? At number 10, if you watched my last episode, this is the one that was in the intro, Kid Clown and Crazy Chase. You play as Kid Clown, trying to rescue the Princess Honey of the Clown Planet from the evil space pirate Blackjack. The game is an isometric platformer with a bit of a rail system in it. You're kind of forced to move, and your objective to beat uh, the fuse on the bomb that Blackjack has lit to the bottom of the hill area that you're in, and and get rid of it. That there is a all you ought to collect the four sweet orbs in each level, or else you will have to do the level over again. The game is a lesser known kind of platformer, and it has a Game Boy Advance remake. It was originally for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And the Game Boy version has 11 levels. The Super Nintendo only has four, but it is a very neat game and. You should try it if you ever get the chance. On the island of Malta Nui, new dangers awake. That's right, at number 9 we have Bionicle Malta Nui Online Adventure 2, The Final Chronicle. And uh, this is a point and click adventure like Ma Mansion, Monkey Island, or Strong Bad's Cool Game for Attractive People. You play as Holly, a Gamma Torn, in a prequel to the Bionicle movie Mask of Light. You explore the island of Mata Nui, you play Coley, and you uh, find out secrets that may or may not be canon to the Bionicle storyline. It's a very cool game, and you should play it if you can find it, which, thanks to me, you can. The game also features a few RPG-like elements, such as leveling up your skills with the Coley matches, many games that you can play, and also a bartering system where you use widgets, the Matoran currency. You will have to earn your widgets, you have to make goods, sell them, and such, and you also have to mine at times. It's kind of like Minecraft in a way, but not. It's a flash-based game, available for download, and it's completely free. At number 8, we have And Yet It Moves, named after the famous quote of Galileo. Galileo! No, we're not singing Bohemian Rhapsody here. And, uh, yes, it is named after the famous quote of Galileo about the sun and the earth, the earth rotating around the sun. And um, it has interesting physics engine. It's a platformer, but you are able to turn the world at 90 degrees, or if you're playing it on the Wii, at any amount of degrees, and the physics will alter. Such as if you're moving slowly at first, and you suddenly flip it upside down, the character will suddenly start to fall real fast. The um, physics engine was created by a group of students, actually, in Austria. It's uh, got a neat design for it, with a paper collage style graphics system. A game features three worlds, a forest, a mountain, a uh that was being described as a snake bit and, and snake bite induced hallucination it's very cool you should try it at if you got a Wii it's only ten dollars try it there at number seven we have Metroid Zero Mission and you play as the bounty hunter Samus Aran as you search for a way to destroy the Metroids. And I, this game is a retelling of the original Metroid, and it's also the introduction of Samus' Zero Suit, which has become famous thanks to Smash Brothers, introducing it in 3D, as well as Metroid Other M, introducing it in another version of 3D. The game uh, plays similar to the game Super Metroid, but it's Graphics are like, more improved, and also it's a prequel. And it's an interesting game. You should try it out. 
At number six, we have Septera Core, a RPG by Monolith Productions. It takes place in the world of Septera, a world with seven world shells. Odd for a planet, considering that usually they have continents separated by oceans. Or this one, they float between each other. They are all connected to a biomechanical spine called the, well, the spine that uh, goes from the North Pole to the South Pole and keeps them regulated. They are um, connected at the core that generates power. In the game, you play as Maya, a junker from World Shell 2, on a mission to prevent a war between the rest of the shells and World Shell 1 inhabitants known as the Chosen, who think they are more perfect than any other world shell. The uh, graphics are pre-rendered, computer generated, kind of like Donkey Kong and Vector Man, and it's just a very neat looking game. The environments are beautiful, and it doesn't take much processing power. It's honestly a decent RPG for its time. At number five, we have Mr. Robot, a platform game with RPG elements from the company Moonpod. The game stars a robot named Asmov, and he is unit number 1138. If you can't tell already, this game has a lot of science fiction references in it, from ranging from Star Wars to Short Circuit, one of my favorite movies from the 1980s. It's uh, got many robots on the starship Eidolon, and they are all commanded by the uh, mainframe unit, Heel 9000. Can you guess where that comes from? It's got some interesting gra graphics, and if you're a fan of sci science fiction, you should really check it out, because it has so many references, and it's just an interesting thing. The robots on the Eidolon have been uh, floating through space for the last 143 light years. I know that's a distance measurement, not time measurement, but I don't know how many years that would actually be. And they are monitoring humans that are in hypersleep, and when something goes wrong, the story picks up from there as you journey through the ship with Osmob. At number four, we have... Psychonauts, a 3D platformer with an under unorthodox style. It's got an all-star voice cast, including the voice actress who played Adam Lyon on My Gym Partner's a Monkey, and of course, the voice of Daggett, Invader Zim, and Alpha 5, Richard Stephen Horvitz, who plays the main character, Raz. It's about a summer camp for psychics developing their powers for work for the government. Raz shows up and he has an unnaturally high power for a psychic of his age. Raz's appearance at the summer camp also coincides with some mysterious events, don't they always? <laughs> um, that set the game in motion. The game has a vivid art style and as you explore it, you'll discover worlds that are even more vivid, such as a world that looks like a black velvet painting. The game has one, a small educational value, in that it tells a little bit about psychology. Well, what would you expect from a game that has to do with psychics? Just from the sheer fact of the all-star voice cast, I recommend playing this, because you will love the voice acting and the storytelling. At number three, we have Sonic... Battle, a alteration to the standard gameplay of Sonic, or as most of the time you're playing in Sonic games, it's all about speed, this one is about strategy and skill. You play as the Gizoid, Sonic, Shadow, Tails, Rouge, Amy, even Cream, the rabbit, and as you try to learn the secrets behind the Gizoid, known as Emerald. It's a unique take on the Sonic styles, and if you ask me, it's a very interesting story. And especially since you can customize Emerald, the Gizoid, with uh, different skills as you go along. It is a bit intensive, like an RPG, 
you have to go back and forth getting skills like 100 times and also points to use these skills but it's well worth the time to take at number two it's fate a what i would call the poor man's fable because of the low system requirements it's uh, an rpg created by wild tangent your actions in game actually affect the outcome of your game you can be good or bad and, and it will affect it kind of like what fable has it's um even got a pet system you can feed different fishes to the pet that you have and it will transform into things such as giant spider-like creatures or dragons and help you fight in the dungeon the dungeon is very deep and it has a storyline i recommend this and at number one we have portal 2 a first person shooter mixed with a puzzle you play as Chell as you journey through Aperture Labs again. This is the sequel to the original Portal, and it marks the return of characters such as GLaDOS, and uh, introduces a new character named Wheatley, who is voiced by the UK's version of The Office, also the original, I think, Stephen Merchant. It, and Wheatley is just a funny character, even when he becomes, well, you'll see, I don't want to reveal anything. The game is a must play, and it's from Valve, so you can't get better than that. And that concludes this week's Pac-Man's Top 10 Games and Where to Find Them. Tune in next week for more games. Thank you, good night.